Welcome to Transit Unplugged. I'm your host, Paul Comfort. On today's exciting edition, we talk to one of the top transit CEOs in North America, Phil Washington, CEO of Los Angeles Metro, where he oversees not only transit, but also highways, roads, and other infrastructure. We'll talk to him today about the interplay between all those responsibilities and a look at some of the major mega projects he has lined up for the next few years. All that on this edition of Transit Unplugged. What does it mean to be a successful public transit agency? What are you doing to lead the way? It's time to learn from the top transit professionals in North America. This is Transit Unplugged with your host, Paul Comfort. Hi, I'm Paul Comfort, your host of Transit Unplugged, and my guest today is Phil Washington, the CEO of LA Metro. Phil, thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Yeah, we're at the Smart Transit Conference in Baltimore, and Phil just gave an amazing talk about, uh, I think he's got more projects going on than anybody else in, in North America, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But first, we like to get to know our guests. And so, um, Phil, tell us a little about yourself, your background, and how you ended up being CEO of Los Angeles Metro. Well, first of all, Paul, thank you for having me here. Um, I am originally from the south side of Chicago, grew up in uh, public housing on the south side there, uh, and uh, left home at uh, about 17 years old uh, and joined the United States Army. Okay. And I thought that I would be in the Army for maybe two, maybe three years, ended up staying for almost 25 years, and was fortunate enough to uh, be promoted uh, to the highest enlisted rank possible. What was that? Uh, and uh, what's that rank? Command Sergeant Major E9. Uh, Sergeant Major. Wow. Right. And uh, decided to uh, retire from the military, and saw an ad in the Denver, the Colorado newspaper, uh, for the transit agency. Went down and interviewed, and was hired for that job uh, as the assistant general manager for um, the regional transportation district in Denver and was there for 15 years with the last six years uh, as the CEO. Okay, wow. And then from there, how'd you end up at LA? Uh, yeah, from there, uh, got the call uh, from Mayor Garcetti, uh, the mayor of Los Angeles, to ask him whether I was interested in coming and running uh, LA Metro. Mm. Uh, I said yes and uh, been out there ever since, the last almost three years, and and that's uh, been great. Do you have family with you out there? Uh, no, no, I have a, a house still in Colorado, <laughs> so I kind of go back and forth every okay. couple of weeks or so. Gotcha. Now, is, is the um, LA Metro, um, Governmentally, is it under the control of the city government or is it a standalone agency? How does that work? Uh, LA Metro is a standalone agency with a 13 member board of directors. Okay. Uh, the board of directors uh, includes always the mayor of Los Angeles. He has uh, three uh, additional seats. Uh, so he has four total, okay. including himself. Um, the county supervisors, five county supervisors are also on that board. Mm. And then other mayors from the surrounding areas of Los Angeles. So uh, 13 member board, uh, standalone agency, uh, 10,000 employees, very large agency with a big program. So LA is always in competition with Washington, D.C. about who has the most congestion. Uh, <laughs> and I think L.A. won this year. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, yes. So how big is the area you serve, like population-wise and land-wise? use, land -wise? Well, it's the largest county in America, the most populous wow. county in America, almost 11 million people okay. just in L.A. County. And is it a city-county situation like Baltimore City uh, is? Where, no. Oh, no, L.A. It's separate? A, it's, it, well, it's a... It's L.A. County, the okay. county, and then 88 cities within the county. 88 cities? With uh, Los oh Angeles, gosh. the city of Los Angeles, okay. obviously city of Angels. the largest yeah. city within the county. But huge area, big county. I was reading something not long ago saying that uh, L.A. County is larger than, just the county is larger than 40-some states. Really? So, uh, wow. It's, it's crazy. Isn't that something? Yeah. And so tell us about the scope of your agency. Yeah. Yeah. What services do you operate? Uh, well, we're unique in that we are in charge of transit, of course, mm -hmm. buses, rail, all that. 
but also highway, highway okay. improvements. That's very unusual, yeah. yes. And regional planning. So we have all the planning for the county. So we have those three big functions, transit, highway, and wow. regional uh, planning. So what's and your so, annual budget? Uh, the annual budget is somewhere around $6 billion. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. That's amazing, Phil. Yeah, it's pretty huge. And and on the transit side, what are the modes you operate? Um, we operate, of course, bus. We have uh, one of the largest uh, fleets of buses, um, second to New York, I guess. Okay. Um, we have, uh, our fleet is uh, CNG, so we have the largest compressed national uh, gas fleet. Um, we run rail, of course, uh, and uh, we are in the bike share business as well. So we run all of those modes. We fund um, many of the smaller bus operators in LA County. Uh, we also fund Metrolink, the commuter rail service. Okay. Uh, they get about 50, 55 percent of their funding from Metro. Uh, so we fund them as well. Hmm. And you have access services, a separate access, paratransit? Yeah. Yes, access services, we fund them as well okay. uh, and uh, uh, provide oversight over them as well. All the services that you mentioned that you run, do you run them directly with your employees or do you contract any of that out? Uh, the, serv the bus and rail we run primarily uh, through our employees. Okay. Uh, the muni services that we fund, the 24 or so smaller bus yes. agencies, uh, are run by those agencies and some of them do contract out, but we fund them. Okay. All right. Wow. You've got uh, quite, a, quite a big job on your hand. Probably the... Uh, one of the two or three biggest transit jobs in North America, I'd imagine. It keeps us pretty busy. Yeah. I think, uh, well, New York and then between Los Angeles and Chicago, mm -hmm. we run second and third, I guess. How many uh, riders a day do you know from your um, whole We whole have uh, 1.3 to 1.4 million riders a day. Okay. Uh, and that is climbing as we open up more projects, uh, rail projects. Well, let's talk about that. That's a good segue to the next. Uh, during your speech, you were talking about Measure M, mm -hmm. which was passed, which was a half a cent increase in the sales tax. Tell us about that and what that's funding. Well, Measure M uh, is a new half cent sales tax that was passed last November. Um, it, the the idea in L.A. County, um, one of the first half cent sales taxes was in 2008, uh, which was Measure R. And okay. the thought then... Uh, in 2008 was that we always needed to go back for the second half of the program, if you will. And so Measure M is sort of the second half of the program from 2008 Measure R, which was another mm. half cent sales tax. So we went to the voters uh, last November, November 2017, and we asked the voters for a new half cent sales tax. And then we also said that when Measure R, the 2008 tax, expires in 2039, we want to extend that as well with no sunset and into perpetuity. And that passed? And so that passed by 71, over 71% 71 of the vote uh, last November. And so what that tells us is that people want transportation infrastructure. They yeah. want it. And as a matter of fact, 70% of the measures around the country were successful. That's interesting. We had, I was talking to Tiffany Gunter two weeks yes, ago Detroit. from Detroit, and, and she wasn't in charge then, mm -hmm. but unfortunately there's mm -hmm. Pat, uh, did not pass. That's right. And so what would you say is the secret sauce behind getting something like that passed where you're asking people mm -hmm. to take money out of their own pocket mm -hmm. every time they buy something yeah. to invest in transit? Well, let, let, me, let me say I've been fortunate enough to be involved with two successful measures, one in Denver and one okay. in Los Angeles. And uh, uh, a great political champion is always necessary. Mm -hmm. um, I was very, very fortunate uh, in Denver to have the then mayor, who is now the current governor, oh, okay. John Higginlooper, was the public face of that campaign. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the political champion in Los Angeles is Mayor Eric Garcetti. Uh, so I think that you must have that mm -hmm. uh, political champion. The other piece, I think, is bold agency leadership. Bold agency leadership and the ability for the agency to put together a plan to present to the governing body mm. or, or the board. And so I think the combination of those two things 
um, uh, in addition to a really good plan, I think you have to have a good education program as well. So you're telling the public exactly what you're going to do with that money. You're running a campaign almost, That's aren't right. you? You're running yeah. a campaign and specificity of the plan is very, very important because the public, they're not going to vote for something that they don't uh, have knowledge of. So you got to tell them exactly how you're going to spend the money. Absolutely. And I how are you going to spend the money? Well, I mean, you know, we have, if you think of Measure M as a pie, if you okay. will, 35% uh, of that pie is transit, transit projects, okay. rail right. lines, bus rapid transit lines. 17% uh, of that pie is highway improvements. Um, another 17% or 16% is what we call local return. Hmm. The idea of giving money back to the 88 cities in the county so they can do their uh, local streets, sidewalks, potholes is in this program as well. Okay. Uh, there's a slice for state of good repair. There is a slice for keeping fares affordable for seniors, the disabled, for students. Wow. Um, this is the most comprehensive program in North America. That's amazing. Um, it really is. And, um, and then bus and rail operations, we have that in the plan as well. So how else is your agency funded other than this one cent that's on the, you know, from the mm -hmm. previous and this one that's on your sales tax? Well, we have, even prior to the 2008 Measure R, we had two additional sales tax uh, okay. measures called Prop A and Prop C. And there's restrictions on the use of those. Much of that is state of good repair. Mm. Some of it is um, uh, providing funds to the other smaller agencies around the county. But... Uh, so we have those measures, and then, of course, we have uh, a degree of federal dollars uh, that we have received uh, and a little bit of state money. And then, of course, the smaller piece is Fairbox revenue, yes. which uh, is about 20%. Or I was so. going to ask you, 20%? That's not bad, really. It, it's not bad. No. We, we need to increase that. Yeah. Um, but that is sort of a product of our operation and fares and all of that. Right. So. So we have uh, what a friend of mine calls a finance lasagna <laughs> uh, when you talk about funding yeah. uh, layered on top of each other. That's interesting. So um, so let's talk about some of the mega projects you've yes. got coming mm -hmm. then. They're very exciting. You get, you know, the, um, across America, one thing I wanted to comment on that you could talk about is your st the funding specifically for state of good repair. Yes. That to me is amazing, and that's key, mm -hmm. obviously. Do you, so mm -hmm. tell us a little about that part. Well, well, the state of good repair, very, very important to us, very, very important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. You're the one that's responsible <laughs> that's to make sure right. it's running safely. That's exactly right. And so when we put this measure together, Measure M, uh, we were um, very, very keen on talking to uh, our board about the need, the importance of state of good repair. Now, this is really an unsexy thing. I right. Mean, you know, when you talk about state of good repair, uh, you know, right. nobody shows up for, uh, and you can't put a ribbon on a rebuilt engine. That's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, but we impressed upon our board the importance of this, um, and they agreed, and mm -hmm. it created that slice. Um, what we are doing in this area is, is going from what I call an age-based asset management system to a condition-based asset management system. And I think that is very, very important. Mm -hmm. That's like um, following the EAM rules right. from MAP 21, so That's to speak. right, yeah, yeah. that's right, exactly. Yeah. And so the idea, and when you go to a condition-based asset management system, uh, you need boots on the ground. Yes. Because you, you gotta check the condition of the asset. That's right, see and, what condition <laughs> your condition is exactly. in. Exactly, <laughs> that's right, that's right. And so, and so we impressed upon our board to do that and that's not always easy because uh as we know elected officials yeah. like to they you know cut politicians ribbons on want to cut yeah. the ribbons i was a politician yeah, that's I was right. elected official. Right. i understand yeah and they concentrate many times on their four-year term right where infrastructure is multi-year well and, you did an amazing yeah. job to convince them to do it then oh yeah well i mean you know i they they came around and i'm proud of them for doing that yeah but, State of Good Repair is a huge piece of this as we build out these projects that are going to last the next 100 years. We're talking about infrastructure that's going to be there 75, 100 years from now. Yeah. When uh, when I was a county administrator, um, we 
it was early, this was probably 10 years ago, we talked about the parks, the mm -hmm. same kind of thing. Sure. You build these big parks, mm -hmm. you know, with their playground equipment mm -hmm. and all the fields, and people don't think about the maintenance costs that's, that's going right. to come after. And the same that's thing right. with transit, almost more important because it's a common carrier mm -hmm. people's lives are on the line. That's right. And if you've got a problem with the third rail uh, uh, on your metro subway system, uh, that's going to be... So how much money are you talking about, do you think? to spend on state of good repair? Uh, well, I mean, you know, we we have, uh, first of all, uh, over the first 40 years of this Measure M, we will generate about $120 billion, the first 40 years. Okay. Um, the slice for state of good repair, and, and I lump all of this because we have bus and rail operations is 25% of that measure, 25% bus okay. and rail, and then their state of good repair embedded in that yes. bus and rail operations. And then we have another little slice, maybe 3% strictly dedicated to state of good repair. So it's a lot of money in this thing, uh, and there needs to be. Hundreds of millions of dollars. Hundreds of millions of dollars. That's amazing. And, uh, uh, and you know, as we begin this condition-based uh, program, we began to check various assets, and we started with bridges and tunnels. Okay. Uh, let's check the bridges and tunnels, and so we did. You use that. drones to help do some of that. Uh, drones. We're using drones, following the lead of uh, the regional transportation district. Right in Denver, in Denver right? Yeah. Uh, which I think is the first uh, transit agency to use drones to check their overhead catenary wire. That's right. They talked to me about that. That's yeah. right. That's they spoke right. at the last APTA conference down in San Antonio. Right. Yeah. I was on a panel with yeah, that guy. Yeah, my buddy. Yeah, uh, young Luke guy. Cripps. Yeah, uh -huh. Lou Cripps. And so we are beginning to use that same technology to That's check great. our uh, infrastructure. It's yeah. very, very important. I think it's going to be the new thing because you can't put boots on the ground everywhere. That's right. You need technology. That's good. So, okay, so tell us about more of your other big yes. projects, the ones yes. you're excited about. So uh, we have uh, four or five huge projects that are under construction right now. Uh, the Crenshaw Line, which runs through South L.A. and many of the most impoverished uh, communities uh, in Los Angeles is about 75% complete. Uh, this is about a 10, 12-mile line that's going through the heart of Crenshaw, the Crenshaw area. Is it light rail or subway? It's going to be light rail. Light rail, okay. Um, very, very difficult uh, technology. Un some underground, some above ground, some aerial. Mm. Uh, we are almost finished with that project, 75% complete. We have a project downtown Los Angeles called the Regional Connector uh, that will be a game changer for the region. It will connect uh, folks all the way from uh, the northeast all the way down to Long Beach with okay. a one-seat ride, a very, very uh, big-time project. We're about 40, 50 percent complete with that. Uh, we have lines that are going out to the west uh, called the Purple Line that we're building that will go out to UCLA and the VA Center. you got your own Purple um, Line, huh? Yeah, that's right. We're building that's one out right. here in D.C. Yeah. in Maryland, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that line becomes very, very important for the 2028 Olympics because the student or the athlete village okay. will be at the end of that line at UCLA. And that's light rail as well? That is going to be subway. Oh, that's subway. That is okay. going to be Third subway. Rail technology, yeah. um, as we move into the Measure M projects, we're doing something called the Sepulveda Pass, which is probably the most congested artery in America. I've heard of that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, the whole Carmageddon thing yeah, a few yeah, years it's, ago. It's, yeah. Uh, we want to build a subway through the mountain there. Wow. And so we are in the environmental stage of that. Um, we're also looking at various lines to the south. Um, 18 mega projects in the first 15 years of this plan uh, to include numerous highway improvement projects as well to reduce congestion in South LA. That's very nice how you uh, how that's folded together. Mm -hmm. uh, in Vegas, where I was talking to MJ Maynard, they have the oh, same yeah. thing there, where MJ they are over the roads as well as uh, right. transit, and that's it's right. it's a nice way to marry projects together because the road infrastructure is obviously mm -hmm. key. If you want to do bus only lanes, or mm -hmm. you want to do that's some kind right. of BRT technology, if you have control over that, that's, right. that's wonderful. That's right. So I can only imagine what your job is like every mm -hmm. day. So you know, when I was here in Baltimore as CEO, I know that I spent. I don't know, 60 to 70 percent of my time, meetings, uh, politics, all that stuff. So I think people are interested in this. Okay, so you're CEO of LA Metro. What's your life like? What do you do? What time do you get to work? What do you do all day? That kind of stuff. Well, um, <laughs> I, you know, much like what you went through, uh, Paul, I guess about 
60% of my time is, is meetings and politics and meeting with uh, elected officials. Um, I, I like to get to, uh, to work pretty early. Um, I, I like to work out first if I can. Well, that's good. Uh, so that's I'm something the... I failed to do. <laughs> I needed to follow your lead right. on that. <laughs> I'm in the gym, usually uh, in my apartment complex at about 6, 6.30. Give me uh, one hour or so. Uh, and then I'm showering and getting on the train and coming to work. You ride the train um, to work? I ride the train that's every day good. to work. Uh, I live in Pasadena, just north of uh, Union Station. I'm able to get on the train uh, and I'm able to be down in my office, which is at Union Station, LA, okay. uh, in about 20 minutes. So it is perfect for me. So I'm walking in there at about eight or so. And, you know, these are, you know, 12, 14 hour a day jobs. Absolutely, so, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just. And you got a lot of night meetings, I'm sure. Oh, uh, lots yeah. of night meetings. I'm fortunate because our board meetings are during the day. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah. That, that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, How but, often do they meet? Um, we meet, uh, the board meeting is once a month, but the committee the meetings subcommittees, and all right? that, you yeah. know, all that stuff. And, and it's fortunate as during the day when I was in Colorado, we had board meetings at night mm -hmm. and committee meetings at night, which made for just uh, yeah. long, long days. Uh -huh. So we just keep it moving, and it's one day at a time for me. I enjoy the work, and we have a good team. Do you, I was going to ask you about your team. So, yeah. like, who would you consider as your top guys and gals sure. that work with you? Your sure. COO and your C. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your team yeah. a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I think having a good team is so very important. When I arrived at LA Metro, um, you know, there were good people there. Um, uh, you know, obviously, I wanted um, you know uh, some folks, uh, my folks. On these key positions, so I brought in my COO, uh, a and veteran. Uh, his name is Jim Gallagher. Okay. Uh, he's a veteran of about five or six different uh, transit agencies, to include Wamada and. Oh, Art and I New thought Jersey I'd heard of his transit. name, Wamada. Yeah. yeah, he's been around. Yeah, uh, I brought in Therese McMillan, who was a, f a former oh, yeah. uh, 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 deputy FTA administrator, to be my chief planning officer. She's a fantastic mm -hmm. uh, uh, person. I had lunch with her and some folks at APTA Expo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah good, She was good, filling me yeah. in on all the stuff she's doing. Oh, yeah, she, we keep yeah. her pretty busy. Uh -huh. That's a great yeah. pickup for you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I brought my uh, construction guy from Colorado, uh, a guy named Rick Clark, um, brought him in. So he's my uh, uh, mega project oh, yeah. guy. Oh, yeah, got to have somebody uh, good LA. there. Yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, I brought in uh, my safety and security uh, person, not from Colorado, but from Metra in Chicago. Okay, sure. Uh, he was the deputy CEO um, uh, in Chicago, so I brought him from Chicago. He's fantastic. Um, my deputy uh, uh, CEO uh, is a fantastic person. Her name is Stephanie Wiggins. Mm. Uh, brought her in, lots of experience, very, very smart. I talked individual. to her some too. Yeah, yeah, she was at Expo. I yes, think, too. I was talking to her um, about a project we did here in Baltimore because, and I, I wanted to flip over to that sure. soon with you about the workforce. Yes, uh, yes. And, you know, here we did a program where we hooked up with a group called Vehicles for Change oh. who were taking ex felons, uh -huh. training them to be mechanics, right. and then we would train them on bus mechanics. Mechanics right. and then hire them. She was interested yeah. in that for LA. So yeah. you mentioned in your speech today mm -hmm. the role of getting a qualified workforce. Absolutely. And uh, I wonder if you could talk to that. How that forty percent of your current staff is eligible for retirement? Yes. <laughs> Holy it's, cow, it's man! It's incredible. Yeah, forty percent eligible for retirement. Another seventy percent over the age of forty. Uh, How are you getting ready is, for this? Well, I, I well I think you know a, a number of things. We have a lot of training uh, that go that goes on. We created a leadership academy, a twelve month uh, uh, structured curriculum leadership oh. academy. Like where you train your existing employees absolutely. to be managers absolutely. and leaders. Absolutely, absolutely. We are we've created a career pathway and pipeline uh, that includes uh, people in the community. We started a uh, workforce initiative now or when program. Okay. This WIN program identifies, assess, yeah. trains, yeah. and put people to work in the communities in the most impoverished zip codes in South LA. So that's very, very important. That's good. Us. Hell yeah. And we are looking to start a transportation school, a transportation school grades 6 to 12, um, to really touch kids early on in this area of infrastructure. Mm. And I think we have to touch them early uh, to get them interested in this industry. So we're very, very excited.
we, we, we were talking about that at the CEO roundtable, mm -hmm. uh, and I, that's why I asked you the question, too, about the backgrounds people have coming in. Nobody, uh, like, uh, plans no. on going into transit. You fall into mm -hmm. it. But if you can help train young mm -hmm. people Absolutely. for a career and whatever, I mean, you know, the... I don't think people realize what a big field transit is and how many types of jobs. It's mm. not just bus drivers mm. and mechanics. Yes. There's all the mid-level HR, right. finance, IT, uh, procurement, legal. so many. Yeah. I think we have maybe 300, 350 different disciplines. Really? Just within L.A. Metro. All those things that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, just tons of them. And, and young people just don't realize that all of that is there. Tell me a couple more things in our last few minutes sure. here. Uh, your Office of Extraordinary What? Innovation, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this office of extraordinary innovation is something that uh, I wanted to start when I got to LA Metro. Uh, I recruited a, a, a brilliant guy, Dr. Joshua Shank from the mm -hmm. Eno Foundation, uh, to run that. And the idea was to reach out to the private sector, be an incubator of sorts um, for private sector ideas to create. Uh, the unsolicited proposal policy to manage uh, and engage with the public sector on public-private partnerships, mm. to work on our strategic plan and and really chart, uh, help chart the direction for uh, LA County Metro for the next 25 years or so. Um, on the unsolicited proposal piece, we have received uh, nearly 100 unsolicited proposals. Uh, for all kinds of projects and new technology uh, is so exciting. So what did you do? Yeah. You just put out a call and said, if you've got any ideas for LA Metro, Absolutely. submit them? Absolutely. Wow. We, we did a kickoff in 2016. In February of 2016, uh, we did a industry forum that kicked off uh, the opening of this office and kicked off this unsolicited proposal process. Okay. We had 350 people show up from all over the world. Uh, we told them what we were trying to do. We told them about our projects. We told them we were going to the ballot uh, later on that year in 2016. We hadn't even won yet, but we had a lot of faith uh, that we would be able to put this forward. The private sector has responded in an overwhelming fashion uh, to respond to our call for innovation. It's very, very exciting. That office is always working on something great. I betcha. So in the, in the remaining few minutes, what is next for transit? Yeah. I mean, you're kind of at the mountaintop of transit, mm -hmm. our world, and you can see what's coming. What's mm -hmm. coming for transit? What do we need to be ready for? Well, I think autonomous vehicles is one. Okay. Um, I think the ability for us to work with the private sector has to be there. We have to, we cannot be your grandfather's transportation <laughs> agency. Uh, we have to do things differently. We have to engage the private sector. We have to look for uh, innovative technology. We have to break apart the mold on our procurement strategies. We have oh, yes. to be uh, streamlined. We cannot be as uh, prescriptive as we have been. Uh, we have to think performance-based specifications. Uh, we have to be driven by performance. Um, and so what, what I think we're going to see in the next few years is uh, further disruptions, further disruptions with regard to mobility and technology. Uh, there's going to be more Ubers, more Lyfts out there. Uh, we have to figure out uh, also how we can build these mega projects um, within budget and within schedule mm -hmm. um, or the public will lose faith in our ability to do that. That's so the future is bright. There's a transportation I think revolution going on in LA and the country. Uh, I think we cannot uh, depend, uh, overly depend on the federal government uh, anymore. Uh, we're going to have to seek uh, alternative ways of financing and funding projects. Well, the future looks bright, and I can't think of anybody better to help lead it in our country than you. You've had quite a career, and the things you're doing in L.A. are just amazing. I can't wait to see them on the covers of Mass Transit Magazine and Metro and everywhere else. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. We've been talking to Phil Washington, CEO of the Los Angeles Metro, who is uh, not only responsible for transit, but also highways and all kinds of projects. Uh, you didn't mention it, but you've got 40 mega projects. You yes. didn't give me that number, but I heard you say it. 40 in the next 40 years. 40 Are you going to stay there that whole projects. time and lead it? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks no. again for being with us. Thank you, Paul. You've been listening to Transit Unplugged, powered by Trapeze Group. To stay up to date, subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. 
or join the conversation at transitunplugged.com. Thanks for listening.